G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy and in today's video we are going to be taking a little look at the 2021 draft as we're only about four or five weeks away. So I thought it would be a good chance to do a little bit of a snapshot about who some of the best prospects are that are coming up in this draft. Now as I've been saying over the last few weeks, you know, I intend to make a fair amount of draft content, both previewing it and then a bit of review stuff afterwards. Still figuring out exactly, you know, what the content formats are going to look like as such, but it is important to put out there that I'm I'm not trying to put myself out there as you know a absolute draft guru i do follow the draft i have done for many years now but my access to actually watching the kids play games is fairly limited so i guess my role will be to you know try and put in as much research and time as i can into sort of compiling as much info and content as well to package in a way that is easily consumable to you guys you may have noticed a few weeks back i did a video called a casual afl fans guide to the 2021 draft and this will be a similar sort of look but a bit more of an in-depth look at the top 10. Since that particular video you know we've had a, a number of uh, interstate games in particular for between WA and South Australia. We've had the combines. We've also had you know some finals take place. As such we know a little bit more about the top prospects in this draft and where they're likely to fall on draft night. So I've compiled a little top 10 list of the best prospects sort of looking at a consensus between some of the biggest draft experts. The ones I usually go to are Nightmare on Big Footy aka Chris Dory from ES ESPN. Also, Callum Toomey is a great source of information. And also adding in a little bit of opinion and my own personal perspective on the top 10 prospects as to how I rank them. As always, guys, if you're looking for more draft content specifically related to this upcoming draft, then make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There is going to be plenty of content on this topic in between now and late November when the draft takes place. So let's rep straight into it. Let's talk about the best prospects, at least considered by most in this upcoming draft, and that's Jason Horn Francis. Now, there's a lot of talk about Dave cost and whether he's pick one but the fact that Horn Francis who's South Australian has played a little bit more footy over the last few months due to you know Victoria being in lockdown it's kind of seen him rise up the consensus rankings and obviously the fact that Dacos is a father son means he's probably not going to go pick one unless North Melbourne bid but it seems more likely that Horn Francis is getting taken by North Melbourne. For context on how highly rated this kid is it was reported that Adelaide had offered two top five picks to try and secure pick one in this year's draft and Richmond offered something like four picks in the first two rounds for his services with the earliest being seven as well so you get a bit of a feel for how good this kid is rated just based on those offers he's an inside midfielder slash general forward he's compared a little bit to maybe a smaller body Patrick Dangerfield with his physicality but also a Toby Green is probably another comparison you could make he stands at about 184 centimeters 78 kilos from South Adelaide and what I think really makes Juan Francis stand out is his form against men he was playing in the sand for not only that but playing extremely well in the prelim final I think he got 24 possessions three goals 11 clearances or something like that the fact that he's already doing that against grown men at Sanford level is extremely impressive and you get the impression that he's going to come in round one and perform really well for North Melbourne the number two ranked player in my opinion is Nick Dacos who is an inside sort of outside midfielder who stands at about six foot tall from the Oakley Chargers and of course he's a father son for Collingwood and he's the younger brother of Josh Dacos again he's probably more likely to be considered pick one in this draft if not for the fact that Victoria obviously missed a lot of football this year the main difference between him and Horn Francis is he's a bit more of a smooth moving accumulator through the midfield still very impactful for his possessions he really does hit the scoreboard quite a lot but probably Horn Francis has him covered in the general impact per possession because Horn Francis is a massive standout in that area that being said he's still considered one of the best prospects we've seen come through the draft in a number of years where does he go in the draft well he's almost certainly going to Collingwood they've accumulated a shitload of points but where does the bid come probably pick two or pick three the third player we're going to talk about is another father son who is considered probably the top three prospects by almost everyone that I can see this time I'm talking about Sam Darcy son of Luke who was a 205 centimeter 77 kilo ruck key forward in terms of player comparisons nightmare compares him to Max King so we're talking about a almost oversized key forward ruck I think ultimately he's going to find himself playing as a pure key forward at the next level for the Western Bulldogs and I can't help but know it's crazy how you know key forwards and just players generally are getting massively taller from from generation to generation. Key forwards were used to be about, you know, 190 to 195 centimeters some 10 years ago. Now, if you're someone like Jai Amos at 195, you're almost considered undersized and you got Sam Darcy here at 205 centimeters. For perspective, 205 centimeters must be far taller than the average Ruckman in the AFL as well. But anyway, Sam Darcy is an absolute jet, the clear standout key forward in this draft. Where does he go? Well, he's almost certainly going to the Western Bulldogs, another team who has compiled points for 
room. Where does the bid come? Probably pick three or four, even potentially pick two. I can't see him getting bid on any later than pick four. Next up, we'll move to the fourth ranked player, in my opinion, and that would be Finn Callahan, who is a 189 centimeter balanced midfielder who plays very, very well on the outside, but has also developed an inside game to match that explosiveness as well. Callahan's a funny one where he's probably the first kid in the draft where it's not really clear where he's going to end up. I think Horn Francis is almost certainly to be at North Melbourne, and then Darcy and Dacos are the father son. So Callahan's almost the first live pick, it seems. The draw for someone like Callahan is that he's a quite a big body, but also really athletic on the outside and uses the ball extremely well, as well as developing a decent inside game to match that as well. Nightmare actually compares him to Jared Polek with his outside abilities. And if you've got someone with the skills of Polek who can also win his own ball on the inside, you've got a very, very good player. Where does he get drafted? Well, he could go as early as GWS's pick two if they decided not to bid on, you know, Dacos or Darcy. If he slips past GWS, I think any of Gold Coast, Adelaide and Hawthorne will be looking to pick him up. I can't imagine him sliding any further than Fremantle's pick six. Next up, we've got Josh Ward, who is a slightly smaller but balanced between inside and outside midfielder from Victoria, specifically the Northern Knights. He's considered a sort of low risk, ready to go midfielder. Nightmare compares him to Mark Murphy. Seems like a kid who's really switched on, got a good head on his shoulders, strong character, considered a future leader, but is also a really strong production player. So he actually performs well. He's also been lauded for his overall production and generally playing well consistently. Again, he's a very, very low risk prospect as a midfielder, very, very likely to make it. I've ranked him at number five, but he probably falls somewhere between the five to 10 range in the draft. Next up, we have another Victorian midfielder, this time Ben Hobbs, who is a very strongly built 183 centimeter 80 kilo midfielder from Greater Western Victoria. Hobbs may be one of the more divisive midfielders I've seen at this point of the draft in terms of some draft watchers rank him really, really high and potentially top three pick and others probably rate him in more in the late teens. The reason for that being it really depends on how you rate a really, really strongly built inside mid that plays really courageously and with a really high intensity, but perhaps doesn't have that skill and class on the outside as well. Hobbs may be one that it really depends, you know, which clubs are picking as to where exactly he goes. He doesn't seem unanimously considered a top five or 10 prospect. I've read that Richmond really like him, GWS really like him. So if he gets past those picks because there are other players better suited to those clubs on the board, then he may slide a little bit. But for me, I'll be surprised if he doesn't at least stay in the top 10 of the draft. Next up, I've got Neil Erasmus from Western Australia, specifically Subiaco, who is probably one of the more intriguing and exciting talents, certainly in that top 10. The reason being his skill set and attributes kind of make him a really high ceiling, high potential midfielder forward. He's 188 centimeters, 80 kilos. From my understanding, he was a bit more of a medium forward who's really pushed into the midfield this year and added a second string to his bow. The interesting thing about him is that I've seen him compared separately to Mark Lacra, but also Elliot Yo. Two very, very different players in terms of the attributes that they bring. So if you get a player who can win the ball like a bull in the midfield, an absolute contested beast, but also swing forward and be as classy and dangerous around goals as a Mark Lacra, then you've got a serious recipe for an outstanding player. Where does he go on draft night? Well, he's been consistently linked to Fremantle who currently hold pick six, but there is a bit of an old habit in terms of drafting that you link the WA clubs with the WA players in that range and assume they're certainly going to get there. For me, I think Fremantle certainly do pounce with pick six, but he's also been linked to Adelaide at pick five. And I wouldn't be surprised if Hawthorne have a look at pick seven as well. So I'd say his range is probably anywhere between about three and seven. I know it's strange to rank a player lower than those other midfielders and then suggest that they're probably going to be drafted a little bit earlier. I just think with the high ceiling that Erasmus has, he's more likely to go early in the draft, in my personal opinion. At number eight, I've got the highest rated key position defender in this draft, Josh Gibkiss from Greater Western Victoria again, standing 195 centimeters and 84 kilograms. I've read him compared separately to both Liam Jones, who's a great lockdown defender, and also Jake Lever, who's also an elite intercept player. So I think with Gibkiss sort of almost unique unanimously being considered the best key position defender in this draft. That does make his draft range quite wide because it really depends on which teams need a key position defender in that range. Earliest teams that would be looking at him in that range would probably be the Gold Coast Suns. I think that's a real need for them. Is it a bit early at pick three, which will become pick five? Probably. Richmond probably need one as well, but then you float through a few teams like Fremantle have a pick in that range, West Coast. That's where I can see him slide slightly to the later teams if no teams need a key position defender in that range. But I really like what I've seen of 
Gipkis, and I don't think I would begrudge the Gold Coast Suns for picking up with pick five. At the end of the day, that's a real list need for him, and he's a very, very good prospect. At number nine, we've got Josh Rochelle, one of my absolute favorite players so far in the draft. He's kind of a small forward who plays through the midfield as well, standing at 180 centimeters and 78 kilos. Again, a player with a fairly wide draft range, but I honestly think that as we get closer to draft night, he will find himself closer to the top 10 than pick 20. The comparisons for him are very flattering. I've seen Toby Green. I've also seen Alan Didak. So we're really talking about a sort of game-breaking smaller midfielder that can really open up the play and use his skill. Rochelle strikes me as a player that doesn't necessarily get picked on teams needing a small forward. It's probably just a case of he'd be considered best available probably anywhere from about pick 8 to 12. I've seen in the WA media here, apparently both West Coast and Fremantle have shown an interest in him in their picks around 6, 8, and 10. But you could see a Richmond picking him up in that range. You could see St Kilda with pick 11 as well taking him. When I say pick 11, it's currently pick 9, but it'll probably get pushed back to picks. So he's one to watch for me. I'm very intrigued to see where he lands on draft night. And finally, rounding up my top 10 is the highest rated pure ruck in this particular draft. Another player who is quite divisive in terms of where draft watchers rate him. But I'm talking about Mac Andrew from the Dandenong Stingrays. He was previously a next generation academy player for the Melbourne Footy Club, but the rules changed. And because he's likely to be a top 20 pick, almost certainly Melbourne don't have the right to match a bid for his services unless he slides to, you know, past pick 20 and then they can actually match a bid and take him on the list. But he's 200 centimeters and amazingly only 70 kilos. So we're talking about a very, very raw athletic prospect. He's definitely going to be a long-term project player and that comes with some risk, obviously. He needs to pack some muscle on, but what he does have is an insane leap at center bounces. If you've got a player who can leap like he has an impact contest in his explosive way, and then you get him to successfully put on weight, this is a very, very high risk, high reward pickup. Who does he go to in the draft? Well, apparently GWS have been linked to him and they hold pick two as it currently stands, which more likely becomes pick four. Is that a little bit early for his range? Yes, perhaps, but again, he's a player that will have his final draft position sort of influenced by which teams happen to have picks around that range. So GWS desperately need a young Ruckman. If he's on the board at pick four, they are certainly going to consider grabbing him. If he slides past there, then I think he is a worthy consideration for any of Hawthorne, Richmond, maybe not Fremantle, St Kilda, yes, and maybe West Coast as well. He's a funny one where I feel like GWS may have made their mind up and according to Matt Rendell, are very, very keen on drafting him with their first pick. So do they creatively trade down to get another pick later in that range and say end up with pick six or seven are able to draft Mac Andrew anyway. That could be one to watch on draft night in terms of a live trade. But anyway, guys, that is my very superficial summary of the top 10 prospects in this draft. I'm sure there's a lot of you who think my rankings are probably wrong and there's players that, that I didn't mention that you think probably are in the top 10, but this is just a very, very gentle easing into the draft content and it's going to get much more in depth as we get closer to that night. In the comment section below, I'd love to hear from you which club do you go for and which club are you hoping falls to you on draft night? Who are your favorite players in this draft? As always, I hope you're enjoying the content, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to keep up with all these draft videos and I'll see you all very soon somewhere on YouTube. Cheers.